Hey everybody, Doug Fink. I wanted to walk through in this video a new function that I've added to the PowerShell Notebook module. It's called Invoke Execute Notebook. And we're going to talk a little bit about Jupyter Notebooks. And this module works with Jupyter Notebooks at the command line. So what I want to go through is uh, we'll talk a little bit about Jupyter Notebooks, nothing major. Uh, we'll show you how to invoke execute notebook works without parameters, what it does. Then we'll add the output notebook parameter so we can save those results to another notebook on the local file system. Or you can send it up to a GitHub GIST so you can share that with other people, show you how that works. Last but not least, we'll show you how you can parameterize a notebook uh, and then pass parameters into it from the command line. Gets really interesting. You want to check that out. Last but not least, definitely get the PowerShell Notebook module because it has this and so much more. Down in the description, there will be the GitHub links where you can find out this mod, find this module. You also get a link to where it is in the PowerShell gallery. And make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notify button so you can get notified when I put up new videos about this module and other ones like my import Excel and other things I'm working on and other videos about interesting PowerShell topics. So let's kick this off. So here I've run uh, a local Jupyter Notebook service and what that does is it kicks off a page and it shows what files, what notebook files I have in the directory where I kicked it off. I happen to have the parameters.ipymb file. If I click on this, this has a four cells, a bunch of PowerShell code. And uh, what I've done here is just uh, added a couple of variables up top, dollar alpha, dollar ratio, dollar a, and I set them to some values. And then in the next cell, I print out a string showing what those values are and multiplying alpha times ratio. In the next one, I set a variable called twice to twice, I multiply dollar a times two, and then in the last cell I print it out. Now if I wanted to take this and you know run this at the console or put it into a PowerShell script, I would have to copy and paste all of these cells out one by one and then paste them into a command line. So what invoke execute does is I can actually invoke it, pass it in a particular uh, Jupyter Notebook, and it'll execute each of the cells and only return the results from any cell that executed that had output. So that's what you see here. So we see this output and we see the last piece of output. That's what gets uh, run and, and printed. But this goes a couple steps further. Let's say I wanted to run it, but I wanted to create a new, a new file. So I can call this new book that I, IPYMB, and that actually took the original notebook, duplicated it, and then reran all of the different cells, and then injected them back into this new notebook. And what that looks like is, if I go back here, I can now see there's two books that my local Jupyter service is uh, running on. And you can see we get the same values again. So, but it's, it's a completely new book. So now I have the original book and I have the copy. Taking it a step further, I can change that local copy and I can say, do a gist colon and what this will do will do exactly the same thing as before but now it'll actually post it on github uh, the gist github and then it should launch a web page it posts it up to a gist and notice it all renders this is the notebook stored in a, a, a gist file it's lo loads it up there as a secret so not everybody can see it and github knows how to render jupyter notebooks you can't run anything here you can only see uh, the, what the cells were and what the output was but then i can take this url and i can pass it off to people that i'm working with to have them take a look at it and they can actually download this 
particular file and then run it on their system if they have Jupyter installed. Um, or they can run it in Azure Data Studio. So let's take a, a look at the next step. So that's really you know, useful, helpful. Now notice the first cell, it has these three variables. And I've also added a tag parameter. And I did that by typing in parameters here. And then I clicked add tag. And it's at the top of the file, but it could be anywhere, any of the cells in here. And what invoke execute notebook does is it looks for any cell that has a tag parameter. And if I specify parameters at the command line, I can pass in a hash table. And let's, uh, well, let's just do this again. So that's the original. And I will now pass in, and I'm going to change A to B15. So I pass in a hash table. So now notice it says it took the 15 and multiplied it by 2, and I get twice as 30. So I'm now executing the local static notebook, but I'm overriding parameters in it. I can do it again, up it to 30, and now we have 60. And then let's also change uh, ratio. And we'll change that from 3.7, and spell it correctly, equals 4.8. Notice we get the 4.8, and we get the new ratio. And again, we can so we're affecting, we're passing parameters into the notebook, watching the code do its thing, execute with the new parameters, and I can send it back out to gist, and we'll call it new book params dot ip ymb. And that takes us off. And we can see, here's the original parameters. I then inject the new parameters as overrides. And we see the new values as well. So I have the original. And I have now the new one with the overrides. Again, I can take these both. And I can pass off the URLs to colleagues. They can take a look at it. They can download these books. And then they can run them locally. Uh, and if they have this PowerShell module, they too can run it from the command line to do overrides of the parameters and then re-output the information either locally or back into a gist and then share that back with me. Um, so it's a far easier approach of rather than copying and pasting all this information, changing the parameters, creating a new book, um, all available at the command line. So that's basically what I wanted to go through. And last but not least, if you want to catch up with me, you can see there's my blog. I'm on Twitter. Go up to my GitHub repo there. Uh, I have uh, lots of modules and lots of different things. Uh, you, I have a new one called Tiny PowerShell Projects that you want to check out. It's 22 puzzles uh, to figure out how to better work and how to use PowerShell in different ways, including test-driven development using Pester. So if you want to get your feet wet with all that, find that on my GitHub. You're on this GitHub uh, YouTube channel. Subscribe and get the notifications. Lots of videos to come. I also run a virtual meetup. Get on there. You can sign up and get notifications of the next set of speakers that we have. We have uh, the next couple of months filled with speakers, so it's a good place to get more info about PowerShell and what's going on in the community. So thank you for watching. Have a good day.